Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. Let's go back to 1998. Exodus. Yes, I've previously shown you my Tempest complete set and my Stronghold almost complete set, just missing that Mox. But here is my Exodus complete set, 1998. So the end of the Wrath cycle. Exalted Dragon, a perplexing reserve list card. There are nine reserve list cards in this set, and of course this was the time period when Watsi was winding down the reserve list. They knew they did that at some point they would want to not add any more cards to it. Soul Warden, man, this was such a great card in Booster Draft at the time. I remember drawing that in several different Booster Draft tournaments that I played in the Exodus time frame. Forbid a counter spell with a buyback of choose and discard two cards. Of course, a really good option for buying back a counter spell. Um, it became a really good card in Counter Phoenix. I have a video, I'll just put it like right up there. A Counter Phoenix card where you could discard your Phoenixes and then bring them back from your graveyard. Airtie, Wizard Adept, of course, another reserve list card in the set, and sporting his ridiculous late 90s tough cool look that 25 years later now just looks preposterous. Dominating Lissid, another reserve list card, of course, the only Lissid on the reserve list. Mind Over Matter is a reserve list card and very powerful. You can just imagine how discarding a card to tap or untap a permanent just immediately your your head starts swirling with all the infinite combos that, that you could do with that, even back in this era. What else do we have here? So Treasure Trove, this was always an interesting one to me because JM Day Tome was a card that I really loved. It was that artifact that costs four mana. You pay four and tap it to draw a card. But if you're playing a blue deck or maybe even a multicolor deck that includes blue, this is just strictly better because it doesn't have to tap. You can keep doing it. Carnifage, a staple of black aggro decks at the time, and Coaling the Weak. You know, there's a funny history with Coaling the Weak where initially people thought it was pretty good, and then it kind of had this long period where people thought it was bad, and, and then eventually people realized, no, w wait, that is actually pretty good. It's, it's a pretty decent card, especially if you can optimize what you are sacrificing to it. If you have a, say, hilarious combo where you play a Priest of Gix, and then you sacrifice the Priest of Gix, to Colleen of the Week. So, of course, more obnoxious, dothy creatures. And Death's Duo, not a great card, but, you know, bringing stuff back from your graveyard is always okay. Hatred, a reserve list card that completely broke the entire Type 2 tournament scene for the summer of 1998. Basically, every unblocked creature is potentially you losing the game. Oath of Ghouls, another reserve list. And Recurring Nightmare, this is reserve list too. You know, it sounds like there's tons of reserve lists in this in this set, but there's only nine out of 143 cards. But Recurring Nightmare, just ultra powerful. Sacrifice a card and re return Recurring Nightmare to your hand to take a creature card from your graveyard and put it into play. Just, it's, it's held up over time as a super powerful card. Spite Cannibal, of course, immediately shuts down all the green spike creatures that we got throughout the Wrath Cycle. What do we have going into red? So Monstrous Hound, back in this time period at least, I, I don't know if Watsi still does this, but every set had a 4-4 four, four creature that costs 4 mana, and its flavor text had a single 4-letter word in it. And so this was the one for this set. Where is... Okay, it's on the next page. Sonic Boom, I think it's called. Not a lot of great stuff there. Yeah, Sonic Burst. There we are. You know, people always tried to mash that into Sly decks in the time period, but there were just too many other cards that were better. And now as we look back from 25 years in the future and we talk about pre-modern Sly decks, it never makes the cut. Shattering Pulse, of course, strictly better than the old Shatter, which was the same mana cost, the same effect, but this one has the buyback option on it. It's interesting to see cases like this, this early in Magic's history, where Watsi was already creating cards that were strictly better than existing cards. I'm sure Mark Rosewater would have some elegant defense, but Oath of Druids, another one that was a um, had a long-lasting impact on the game. I'm sure I'm 
skipping over some other great cards in here. Sky Shroud Elite is one that I always wanted to be really good. It always looked like, you know, kind of like Cured Ape, but um, depending on your opponent's lands. Now, Survival of the Fittest may be one of the most powerful cards in this set. I think it's amongst the top two most expensive cards in the set. It's reserveless and just an ultra powerful effect. A couple more of these terrible spike creatures. I always wanted someone to do something cool with them, make a neat deck, but you know, outside of uh, some kind of infinite combo to bounce it back to your hand and then distribute the counters on the other things, I, I don't think there's really anything that interesting you could ever do with it. Coat of Arms, that's a great card. It's been reprinted a lot of times. It's it's not reserve list, but, you know, it's very popular in uh, tribal commander decks. And this was always neat to me, Memory Crystal, to reduce the cost of those buybacks. So you could think of things like Capsize or Whispers of the Muse when you get those down to cheaper costs. And Capsize and Whispers of the Muse, again, are both in Counter Phoenix. So, you know, maybe this is a card to consider for that. And the last page, Sphere of Resistance. I always love this card. Now, this is this is not reserved list, but it has not been printed very many times. And it is a very powerful, making all spells cost additional mana to play. Um, City of Traders, of course, this is a very valuable card. It's basically like the land version of Soul Ring. So, you know, why did I why did I bring this here and show to you besides just to create another video and Maybe share it with the nostalgia of some of my older viewers. You know, YouTube says that 50% of my audience is men age 35 to 55. So most of you will be in the right time period, the right age to appreciate this. But another thing that I wanted to talk about with this was set collecting and just putting together a binder with sets in it. And I think it's something that goes on kind of stealthily below the radar. You know, every time I, I post a video with a set in it, whether it be that Tempest set, the Stronghold set, my 94 Flare Ultra X-Men set, or the 95 X-Men set, all the various sets that I've, I've showcased on this channel over a long period of time, every time somebody will come to me in the content, the comments, and they'll say, hey, um, I have that set, or yeah, I collected... You know, 10 different sets from Ice Age to Mercadian Mass, or, you know, maybe they'll say, uh, every set since 2016, I've, you know, I've put together all the, the base cards, so not all the foils or the alternate arts or anything else once we got into the Flashy era, but it's surprising the kind of comments I get from people showing that there is still a very small minority of players and collectors who want to have something like this, who want to have a binder full of cards to just look at and enjoy and appreciate. And so I, I think that's I think that's really cool that those people are out there, even if most of the time we don't see them. Because as far as I know, nobody really features sets as a big part of their magic YouTube channel. You know, for me, it's just something I occasionally show and talk about. But it, it makes me wish there were people doing that more, that maybe somebody would have a channel out there where they've collected nearly every set in Magic's history or maybe every set for only the last 20 years or maybe they have a lot of early sets and now they've picked it up again. You know, I think that would be a neat subject for someone to cover and really do some justice with. And I, I feel like there's probably an audience for that out there and we just don't see them right now because, well, it's it's not as sexy as MTG Finance or you know, actually being good at playing the game and, you know, building good decks and brewing and things like that. So I, I feel like it's probably an unserved or at least underserved part of the market out there. So let me know what you guys think. You know, I always love showing you these old sets and I'm always, I'm always um, encouraged by the kind of great response I get from them. So let me know, guys. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join me on Final Trade. Consider joining the Patreon. Thanks a lot, everyone.